What is up guys, Pirates Road here, and we are back with another video. So today, it's going to be a pretty interesting video. Um, pretty much what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building a, another paludarium with the water feature. And uh, this one will hopefully be either, well, either the or one of the best ones, of, uh, like between the dart frog and this one. Because this is a more, you know, I've had more experience with building them. Um, but we're going to be doing all life plants, um, possibly some fish in the uh, pond section. And the animal that's going to be going in here, you'll see in, the in, in a little bit. If you want to make guesses, you can. It's up to you. But um, before we you know, get on the, all the foaming process, I'm sure many of you are aware of what we have to go through to start this process. Because with the dart frog tank, which is, of course, looking quite fine. The only upsetting thing is the, the pump went out. Um, but otherwise, you know, trial and error, but, um, the dart frog tank, as I said, looking quite fine, so I want to go over the things you'll be needing, uh, supplies, and anything like that, so let's continue. Always good lighting, um, especially for the plants, and the animals that are going to be going in here are going to need a tropical UVB, that's part of your hint, I guess, and it's a compact top, is what I'm using here, uh, if it's perfectly on, uh, the tank. Um, it's, but you guys, for your animal, you may not be needing that, but that's what I'm using in this case scenario. Background now, you're going to be wanting to use, uh, first off, uh, spray foam. This is what I usually use. There, you know, some people use concrete or other things like that, but I really like the, um, the spray foams. Now, I was lucky enough, I went down by DFW Reptarium, and he had some cans of spray foam, and I've never seen these at any... Uh, hardware store in Texas, and I asked him, his name is Gage, he was very helpful, I asked him uh, where he got these, and he said Elliot's Hardware, which is a, a hardware store, a little family owned type hardware store, it seemed like, just uh, down, just just to the right of the building or so, it wasn't that far, and they had a whole shelf full of these things, and these are the cheapest of the Pond and Stone, and the reason I like the Pond and Stone over any other just spray foam is when it hardens and when it sprays out, it comes out black. So, it, you know, it kind of blends in. And so if some of the silicone uh, silicone soil falls off of it, it still kind of has a natural look. So, and you can know that it's going to be safe for animals because it's meant to go in, you know, ponds, like koi ponds and stuff like that. And so I got three of these cans since the tank's so big. And then I had an Amazon gift card for my good buddy Charlie I got for my birthday. And I purchased this online. It's basically the same thing, a bit more expensive, but it's always good to have a fourth can. So this one's a bigger size though, obviously. And it's the same thing, just a different brand and different size. And then you're also gonna be wanting some silicone, all-purpose silicone. I, I use the GE kind brand, and you're gonna want clear silicone, 100% waterproof, uh, and then full clear silicone, because this is the only one 100% silicone, so those are things 100% waterproof, 100% silicone, and clear. Um, you can use black, but I like to use this one. I just, it's the safest personally. Um, but whatever you use, make sure it's safe for your animals. Some are mold inhibitors, and they, you know, purposely can help uh, produce mold. You don't want that. And this one, just pretty much pure silicone. Um, so, and it's waterproof, so for, it's really great for a water feature, obviously. So, I have two, uh, I have two here that should do the trick, uh, for the background. So, let's get Next off for the main water feature part of our, uh, paludarium. I'm going to be using this, uh, pond pump. Uh, I'm not sure where the, I bought this off of a garage sale. I've tested it and it works fine. Uh, I'm not sure where they got it from. It didn't have a box or anything, but it's, it, it's in good working condition pretty much never been used um this this little tubing here is what sends the water flow upwards this isn't tall enough for me so i got my own little uh, thing here at uh, a home depot i mean lowe's and this fits perfectly always bring if if you need to get uh, more adapter pieces um make sure it fits the size this fits perfectly so always bring your pump with you to wherever you go to get a longer piece but this will be producing the um, major water feature part of the tank. So let's continue Real quick, on. Also, another very handy thing to have always is a pair of scissors. But let's continue on. Next more. up, we have this Exoterra Jungle Vine Large, and uh, 
this is going to be going in whatever creature. I'm not telling y'all yet, obviously. Uh, it's going to be going in its enclosure. Uh, just as more decoration. But this is what I'm also going to be using. I may or may not foam it in. I'm probably not going to just because this is such a big and nice piece of vine. And next, we're also going to want some pieces of cork and just various pieces of wood. So here we have this very tall one. And what, what I plan to do is put this on the side or the corner of the enclosure. Have the pump behind it. I want the pump to be easily accessible. And then have the little uh, thing trickle down the piece of wood. It could be this one. I may do something with the cork. That's a very nice piece. Just various pieces of cork. I may not use all these. I'll probably have extra. But it's always good to have more on hand. Also, I forgot to mention... You're going to want a good silicone gun here. Uh, that's pretty much the only way you're going to get the silicone out of the tube. So make sure, no matter what, you get a silicone gun. Make sure you have a silicone gun. Next up, we have some of Josh's Frog's Pond Wall Substrate Stock. And uh, this is a one piece. They're about $10. They do the trick. It allows water flow uh, to go through it, but it keeps the substrate out, especially good for around your pump and whatnot. Always good to have a good amount of this on standby. Also, it's going to be very useful for the paludarium, the pond section, to block off the substrate so it doesn't, you know, combine. We would not want that. And then you're going to also want a good piece of mesh. Um, this is going to go in between your hydro balls or your false bottom, and then and and your substrate is going to be above it. Uh, make sure it's cut to the size of the bottom of your tank, and then we'll continue. So essentially this is how it goes if some of you do not understand. You're going to have your hydro balls or whatever your drainage layer is. Um, so you can use false bottom which is by Josh's Frost. Your hydro balls. I like hydro balls. I've never tried false bottom so I'm sure, I'm sure they work just as well. And then you're going to have your mesh cut to the size of your tank. Obviously I just kind of slapped it on here. And then you're going to have your substrate layer. This is also from Josh's Frogs. And it's um, a pretty good bag of ABG mix, four quarts. I've got two bags here. If that's not enough for the land area, I may mix it with some Eco Earth. I may not. This should be enough for the little land area I'm going to do. But it's got everything you need to really keep uh, plants going. Um, so this is pretty much how it's going to go. So I've got two, three bags of Hydro Balls two bags of ABG, and then you're going to always, always want some leaf litter if you're going to be putting isopods or springtails. They eat off this, and it's just more aesthetically um, pleasing. If you do get leaves from outside, make sure you bake them and boil them to make sure that you kill off any sort of pesticides or insects or anything like that that could be on the leaves.